what's in the box? Let me ask you a question. Who out there doesn't love Pee Wee Herman? Well, other than the porno theater janitor who had to clean up after him when he got arrested, I would say nobody. <laughs> so funny, I forgot to laugh! Ever since Paul Rubens unleashed his man-child persona in 1977, he's given us one of the greatest comedies of all time, one of the greatest kids shows of all time, and is now finally bringing him back for an all-new Netflix movie to be produced by Judd Apatow. But amidst all this renewed excitement in Pee Wee Herman, one thing that absolutely no one is mentioning is his other cinematic outing from 1988, Big Top Pee Wee. I mean, sure, this one lacks two very essential components from Pee Wee's Big Adventure, the vision of director Tim Burton and the comedic expertise of co-writer Phil Hartman. But that doesn't mean that it can't be without some entertainment value. I mean, this is Pee Wee Herman we're talking about here. So come on in and please help up with you. And let's find out whether Pee-wee's other big adventure is just as big. Uh, top. But first, let's get one thing straight. This really isn't a sequel to Big Adventure or a spin-off of Pee-wee's Playhouse, as Pee-wee does not have any talking furniture or have a friend named Amazing Larry. Here, Pee-wee runs a farm while also aspiring to become a famous botanist with the help of his sidekick, a talking pig who sounds like Pee-wee's Mr. T impression. Splendid! I'm very satisfied with these results, Pee-wee! I pity the poor fool! Don't eat my cereal! Um, Pee-wee, are you sure you're not growing any weed in this greenhouse? But anyway, Pee-wee's simple farmer life gets shaken up when a huge storm blows in and he emerges from his shelter to find a traveling circus has blown onto his backyard, as led by Chris Christopherson, who manages to deliver a pretty solid performance in this flick, despite having a little trouble delivering his lines in one scene. What, what, what kind of show, boss? I'll tell you what kind of snow show ball. Snowball. So Pee-wee invites the circus to set up camp on his farm, where he grows quite enamored of the quirky carnies. There's Chris Christopherson's wife, who is about the size of his index finger. Small world. <laughs> it's all right, kid. Relax. I will give 50 bucks to the first commenter who can tell me how sex between those two would work. There's Benicio Del Toro, making an early appearance as the dog-faced boy before he would mature into a full-grown wolf man. I'm gonna take a bite out of that brat's bazoo. She doesn't get over here now. I will kill all of you! And most importantly, there's Gina, a trapeze artist played by Valeria Galino, whom Pee Wee falls head over heels for, despite the fact that he's already engaged to another woman. Anyway! Winnie! Wait! And if you can't wrap your head around Pee Wee Herman as a romantic lead, then congratulations! You found one of the biggest problems with this damn movie. You see, Pee Wee is great because he doesn't give a shit about boring adult things like love. He's a loner. A rebel. Deja vu. So when you make him try to win over the chick from Hot Shots and inexplicably act like a dick to his perfectly fine fiance, whom he almost fucks, in front of a watching group of kids, it's dull and out of Pee Wee's character and forces me to imagine what his O face looks like. <laughs> And you know how we had Pee Wee mean an interesting and varied group of people in different locations in Big Adventure whose lives were made better by having Pee Wee around? Well here he's stuck in a dirt poor town straight out of the Great Depression where all the inhabitants of the town despise him and the circus for no reason at all. Hey, here's your darn pickle. We don't want no circus here. Pack up this free circus and get out of town. For a character as gleeful and optimistic as Pee Wee is, it doesn't fit and gives him nothing to work with. And you'd think that the circus folk would be a more interesting group of characters, but no Nope, they're pretty dull too. Hence you get a slow and boring slog of a movie. Two words one should never associate with Pee Wee Herman. In fact, the movie only perks up in the last 10 minutes with a musical number that shows how colorful and quirky the past 75 minutes should have been. And of course there are a couple of jokes here and there that do make you laugh. You are getting very sleepy. Your eyelids are getting very heavy. You will enjoy the circus. But at the end of it, you realize why Big Top Pee Wee isn't as talked about as much as Pee Wee's Playhouse or Big Adventure. It's not funny enough to be great, and it's not bad enough to be awful. It's just there. I mean, I hate to compare this movie to Big Adventure and the TV show, because I know it's trying to do its own thing, but when you get a movie this boring, you really have no choice but to do that. So when Paul Rubens does end up making this new Pee Wee movie, let's hope he learns from the mistakes that he made here as well as hire a Haitian voodoo priest to bring Phil Hartman back from the dead to co-write the script. Hi, I'm Troy McClure. Today's secret word is drink, so never hear someone use that word, kids. Drink a lot, booze! Now let's play the drinking game. <laughs>
Take a shot or drink every time Kiwi's fetish of stroking hair goes into effect. And no, these scenes do not go in the same direction as of Mice and Men. Let go. You let go! <laughs> Anyone has to say the name... How do you pronounce that name again? Pickle a poop -a Pickle a poop -a Pickle a poop yeah, Peter Piper Pickle Peppers, so whatever it is. You spot another reference to a line or scene from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Why don't you take a picture, Lad Plugger? I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> and take a double shot when Pee Wee and Gina share their first kiss, which, no joke, once held the record for longest kissing scene in a movie. Until, of course, it got beaten out by the utterly passionate kiss from the Oogie Loves in the Big Balloon Adventure. <sighs> And on the nudity watch, other than Pee Wee fainting at the sight of a girl's cleavage and an appearance by future porn star Dustin Diamond, we get perhaps the only recorded instance of a mud wrestling scene spliced into a kid's movie. This moment has been brought to you by guest editor Tyler Durden. <laughs> on the enjoyableness continuum scale from Bull to Bruce, Big Top Pee Wee shoots out of a cannonball only to land on an underwhelming 5 out of 10. This movie is like watching someone unravel a big cable knit sweater and they keep knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting. I'm Jesse Shade for JoeBlow.com and I can only hope that Pee Wee's deal with Netflix leads to more movies getting made, including the one I know that we have all been waiting for, Amazing Larry, The Origin. everyone, Jesse Shade here from Awfully Good Movies. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see me take on more good bad movies, click on any of the links you see here, or subscribe to see this show alongside all the great content that we offer here at JoeBlow.com. And remember, I love you. Uh, wait, that sounded wrong. But I do love you though.